uh, leave the start. Um, welcome to the Liverpool City Regional Command Authority. Uh, I'd like to inform you on presence that this meeting will be broadcast live to the Command on to the Command Authority website and available for subsequent viewing. By entering this room, you are consented to being filmed and to the possible use of those images and sound recordings for filming purposes. Um, can I, as always, ask members and officers to please ensure that you uh, press the microphone before you speak and turn, switch it off afterwards and make sure your phones are switched to silent. Just before we go on to the exempt items, um, for those who don't know, to our left, um, there are a number of uh, new faces that you'll see in the room. Some familiar ones, of course, very well in fact, but uh, eight graduate starts with us this week who are working across our organisation in different roles and I'm sure they'll bring some new and fresh thinking to our organisation and will be a huge asset to what we want to do in the months and years ahead. Can you just stand up so we can uh, all look and get a point? <laughs> That's our new staff. Uh, yeah, I'm sure on behalf of everyone, we're very well. Um, items 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14 contain exempt appendices due to the information related to the financial or business affairs of a person. Um, and therefore, if you want to discuss any of those later, we will, of course, need to uh, get Jill to guide us through them. Uh, Item one, therefore, on the agenda is apologies for absence. Trudy. Thank you. I've received apologies from Mayor Anderson, Councillor Baines, Councillor Sue Murphy, Councillor Grocott, Councillor Spurrell, Reverend Cannon, Dr Ellen Loudon, Councillor Russ Bowden and Councillor Shelley Powell. Any further apologies? No. Two is declarations of interest for members. Three is the minutes of the previous meeting of the Command Authority, which were held on the 6th of September. Uh, can I ask these are agreed, please? Um, four is mobile announcements, and um, oh, a number of us, um, some of the leaders, and, and um, Asif and, and some of the officers, and uh, went to um, the annual convention of the North meeting, which this year was held in Rotherham, which came as a bit of a surprise to us because it was supposed to be in Liverpool, but we'll come to that in a second. The event uh, is the largest gathering of northern politicians, civil servants, business people, civic leaders, faith groups and trade unionists from right across the northern corridor and it's designed to ensure that we come together to provide one collective voice on key matters affecting this part of the world. Um, one of them is of course transport. Uh, the Prime Minister renewed his commitment to devolving further powers away from Westminster and Whitehall and of course that was welcome, but as ever, the proof of the pudding will be in the eating. Um, just to let people know that at the end of the Convention of the North, um, the torch was passed to Liverpool, and in 2020 the Convention of the North will be held here. So there will be early planning and we want everybody to be involved in that, because um, both of those Conventions of the North now have set the manifesto, if you like, for the North, what we want to do is have something that's really exciting that starts to put flesh on the bones so that when we go to government there's something tangible that we can start to ask them and we will uh, be doing that. Um, uh, a week or so ago I went to the M9, that's now started as the uh, M7, it's now the M9 and that's the Metro Mayors um, from around the country including Sadiq Khan. Uh, we met in Manchester during the uh, Civ Party conference and we discussed uh, what our collective ask would be that we need to put to the government to ensure that we hold the Prime Minister's feet to the fire on that commitment uh, that he made about more, not less, devolution and certainly around skills and transport again, but on a whole host of issues uh, we're going to put our <coughs> asks in on Northern Rail. Um, because it's in the news again, but people will know about if they've got um, the ability for people to write in or, or to go on to Facebook or Twitter or any of the social media platforms, they'll see that it really hasn't improved at all. So early this morning, we've been advised by Northern Rail that they will not be providing services from Liverpool to Manchester Airport 
at all this Sunday and apparently there's no replacement bus service. Seriously, this was happening in London and all of a sudden there was no trains from London to Heathrow. Um, I think it'd be a national uh, scandal and there'd be asked, you know, questions asked in Parliament. Um, we're pushing very hard ourselves but we need to do something because of the misery that passengers on our railways are facing this weekend and, and possibly every single day you'll see cancellations and what's called shore forming. Um, so um, we, we believe that something needs to happen and I've made the company aware of my displeasure on behalf of the city region and said that the, uh, they need to reconsider their decision, for instance, not to provide bus services but also to do something about the unreliable service. We're meeting with the managing director of Northern on Monday, uh, and obviously I'll convey people's uh, strong held beliefs and leave them in no doubt and the feelings about poor performance. And in instances like this, it only reinforces my belief and what I've previously asked for that the franchise has to be removed and that an operator of last resort is brought in, and we'll continue to press the government to do just that. On a, a lighter note, um, myself and Councillor Pachacken had the pleasure of being at the naming ceremony of the RSS Sir David Attenborough at Camelaird in Birkenhead. Um, better known, but not to be said as boating at Bowface, but it is the, the thing that uh, has resonated with the, the general populace. But it was an opportunity to welcome a, a genuine national treasure to the city region. Um, and one that I think myself and Pat took, um, we made the most of it, we took a, a great pleasure in meeting Sir David and explaining some of the things that we're doing in the city region but this has only come about because of the excellence of the workforce in Camel Earth who have um, constructed and manufactured a true masterpiece, something that is the most sophisticated ship, boat, um, possibly in the world at the moment and is going to go and do some fantastic stuff to help us with the climate emergency that we're facing as a, as a, a world, as a, as a planet. Um, again, on those um, happier notes, great to see um, Scouts is doing well, isn't it? And Katrina Johnson Thompson, uh, I'm sure everyone will congratulate or join me congratulating her. I saw um, stuff tweeted from the City Council. Um, I think we all should follow that. It's a, fantastic achievement, you know, not only the home of the champions of Europe, but now we have, did I mention that before? <laughs> no. um, but a, <laughs> a British record in the process was set by Katrina, uh, and so not only a fantastic and remarkable athlete, but I think she's done everybody in the city region proud, and obviously we wish her all the very best now. Um, and just to sort of finish off, uh, Two and a half years ago, I, I, I used this phrase, I said, no border left behind. So I'm honouring my commitment to do that by going out and doing as much community engagement uh, across the city region as I can each month. But over the last few weeks, just to let me know, I went to Birkenhead Park with Councillor Hackett to see, and, and lots of others believe me, to see the Philharmonic Orchestra, so Royal Liverpool Philharmonic Orchestra, must be said, um, on one night and the next night, the Lightning Seeds. <coughs> Um, who performs part of Will's Borough of Culture celebrations and, and Will really have set the bar high. Uh, I visited CNC Robotics and Entry, who's a ground baker and a organisation, a brilliant business, and they make bespoke robots for businesses and organisations across the UK and, and, and uh, abroad. Um, I went to Highton Town Centre, and not to be confused with announcements by the government, but part of our £6 million town centre fund is being used to benefit um, the people in Highton and I spoke to a, well, a number of people from Highton spoke to me um, to tell me how they think the improvements uh, could come about. And I went to Sutton Academy in, in St Helens, um, had a great um, morning speaking to young people about what they believe devolution means to them uh, and I was able to explain um, the situation, um, for instance, that Opposite their school is Lee Green Station, that's going to benefit from a chunk of the £172 million transport funding that we wouldn't have been able to do. And 
makes it easy for them to get, get to and from their school. So um, a real example of what we're doing to improve people's lives. And we're beginning the next round of public question times next week. So the game will start in St Helens, but that's an uh, opportunity to take questions from residents on what they think we should be doing and perhaps to explain to them the importance of devolution and how our funding has benefited their areas, but also about what our future plans are and try to get their engagement in, um, in uh, the, the uh, listening exercises that we're doing. I, I, I see all of that as um, part of the vital tool to bring politics closer to the people and it's in keeping with that commitment to lead the open, transparent and accountable organisation that we were at our um, just some housekeeping, um, Lynn Morris, who people will know from Unison, she's replacing Lynn Collins as my male advisor on the Fairness and Social Justice Advisory Board, uh, while Lynn Collins is on secondment here to the Combined Authority, do some work on our local industrial strategy. So I know that both Lynn's will do a fantastic job, I'm sure uh, our, all of our best wishes go to both of those uh, in the months ahead. Okay, item five then is our first report which sets out a number of proposed changes to the constitution as well as approving the appointment of the returning officer for the combined authority elections in May 2020 and the agreement to the appointment of two councillors to the overview and scrutiny committee. And Jill, you're going to take us through that report. Thank you. Um, if I may bring members' attention to the fact that a slightly revised version of the report is in circulation in the chamber and uh, amongst members of the uh, public in the gallery there today. The uh, only change between the published report and the revised report is the addition of uh, recommendation F, which can be found at paragraph 3.1 of the report. Recommendation F is the only change. I'll come to talk through the recommendations in a moment, but I just ask members to use the revised version of the report. So as, as um, our Metro Mayor has outlined, this report uh, tackles a number of um, constitutional changes that are um, proposed for uh, approval today. And they relate to the evolution of our sort of organisation from a, a sort of a theoretical sort of organisation to a, a, a real live delivery organisation. And our constitution needs to recognise and keep pace with that as a result. The main uh, changes um, are outlined in paragraph 4.5 um, of the report and they talk about changes to the Officer Code of Conduct um, to recognise the circumstances in which we operate, the Land Procedure Rules to recognise the request that um, the preference of members is to, for officers to transact as much as we possibly can in relation to land transactions and Appendix 3, which is the uh, contract procedure rules, which brings together um, some internal sort of procedures around mayors of travel and the combined authority to make it easier for officers to, to do business. There is uh, some further recommendations which can be found at paragraph 4.11, which relates to the Strategic Investment Fund. Uh, members will recall that some time ago you set up what's called a pre-development fund, uh, which was a, a section of the strategic investment fund money for particular purposes, and it's requested that some specific delegations be granted to allow officers to administer that fund. We've then got reference to particular projects and uh, the use of funding that may have been cited in previous reports in the past, um, and 4.15 asks the, the permission for officers to um, use the fund, the strategic investment fund, as a global fund rather than identifying specific aspects of that fund. Finally, in relation to the Strategic Investment Fund, we have in paragraph 4.16, the use of thematic funds. Um, a number of reports that are on your agenda today, for example, again, section off a part of the Strategic Investment Fund so that it can be utilised um, so that it can be utilised flexibly for things like the Brexit Resilience Funds that's later on your agenda. Um, again, some delegations are sought to allow officers to administer that. These are an outline at the moment and there may be some further upon detail um, in discussion with the portfolio holders to develop these further. Um, if I may just take you back to the recommendations to take through each one of those in turn. 
um, at paragraph 3.1, paragraph uh, A, we ask you to consider those uh, recommendations and those that proposals set out in the report and to agree the ones outlined in paragraph B. Um, if I can just draw your attention that uh, we'd like to defer the recommendation that's mentioned in paragraph C and come back to you um, with a, a follow-up on that at a later date. So we won't be asking you to agree recommendation C today, uh, but you will be asked to agree <coughs> recommendations D, which is particularly relating to the appointment of the combined authority returning officer, uh, which uh, is asked to be Mr Tony Reeves from the Liverpool City Council. Um, and then recommendation E on the published report <coughs> asks for Councillor Gorst to be appointed to the overview and scrutiny and your new additional recommendation at paragraph F which deals with the request to appoint Councillor John Morgan from Nosley Metropolitan Borough Council to the overview and scrutiny committee. Hopefully that sounds a lot more complicated than it actually is and we would just like your uh, consent to items A, B, D, E and new paragraph F. Thank you very much. Okay, can we agree the revised um, A to F with C um, deferred? Is that agreed? Um, six is the uh, common ground statement, and this report seeks the approval of the city region's statement of common ground as uh, a really good example of collaborative work and across six local authority areas um, and Councillor Morgan is going to take us through that report. Thank you Chair. The Statement of Common Ground is a key document in the SDS process. It highlights the early cooperation amongst the local authorities plus West Lancashire on high level topics and principles and sets out the tone how the CA wishes to engage going forward. At present it has formally been signed off by four authorities but the schedule to be signed off by the other two within a fortnight. And Chair, could I recommend the uh, move to four recommendations on page 59 of the agenda? Thank you. Thank you very much. It was remiss of me not to actually mention that um, West Lanks are also involved in the, in the consultation. Um, Aileen, oh, Aileen, do you have any comments or questions? Uh, no, nothing can add. Thank you. Okay, in that case, can we agree the recommendations and the set out on page 59 of the report, please? Seven, uh, this report follows on from the previous one, which uh, explains the engagement pro proposals for the spatial development strategy. And again, Graham on the old portfolio, um, you're going to explain what that engagement proposal actually means. Yeah, once again, thank you, Chair. Our 2015 devolution agreement requires the CA and constituent partners to produce a regional level spatial planning document. A spatial planning and development strategy, this document is a key deliverable. It also unlocks further powers for the CA and will prove, and will prove to government that we can meet their challenge. Importantly, the local city region document will not allocate land, it merely highlights that agreed areas are joint priority and will allow us to prioritise and make more joined up decisions on key topics such as, for example, transport, transport and the climate. The paper details the next phase of the process of public engagement exercise aimed at harvesting the views of local people and partners. That's a key step for the CA which guards against the possibility of legal challenges and follows extensive engagement between the CA team and our local authority planning teams. Timing is also important, so the exercise will kick off on the 16th of October and will last 13 weeks. This will allow us to meet our ambitious aim to complete the draft of documents within the 2020 calendar year. Chair, if we could move the recommendations on the two recommendations on page 99 of the agenda. Thank you. Thanks, Graham. Any, any questions for Graham? I mean, it really is a, a stretching and ambitious target, but we think it's achievable and it's important, as you said. This does set the context at a strategic level for what we'll do in the future regarding uh, spatial development. Uh, if there are no further questions, can we agree the recommendations set out on page 99 of the report, please? Thank you. Item 8. Uh, this report sets out the proposals for cycling and walking infrastructure, active travel. Um, so, Councillor Robinson is going to take us through this report. 
Yeah, thanks. And I'm very excited that we're able to bring this forward today because this outlines the Liverpool City Regional Open Cycling and Walking Infrastructure Plan. I think all of us know with the climate emergency and air quality, huge challenges that we face. One of the key ways that we can help address that is by getting many more people travelling actively around our city region. And whilst there are many things over recent years that our city region has been doing well in this space, for example, continuing to fund the largest programme of bikeability, so training young people how to use bikes on the road network of any other uh, location in the country, whether it's been some of the high quality infrastructure that has been being rolled out, or whether it's things like the very successful uh, development of 20 mile an hour zones, particularly in Liverpool and, and Sefton. Even with those great innovations, still only 2% uh, of our journeys are made on the bike, and we know that there's a lot more that we need to do. We know, thankfully, though, that public opinion is on our side. Of residents that we've surveyed, 71% of them are saying that they would like to give cycling a go, but they require high quality segregated infrastructure to have the confidence that they can get on their bike to travel around our region. That's why I think it's absolutely great that we're bringing forward this plan today. Uh, the plan highlights 31 key corridors across the whole of the city region where we think there's a huge potential to put high quality cycling and walking infrastructure in as the spine of an active travel approach right across the whole region. It's not just something that we're committing to on paper, it's something we're going to start putting the spades in the ground for shortly because as and we have previously, funds have already been committed for the first seven of those kind of uh, work streams. The report also sets out a sequence of how we can then deliver the whole of the network across the city region. There's some great international examples, whether it's Seville or whether it's Stockholm or other places, frankly more challenging climates than we've got, of how with the relevant public support you can put something in place and genuinely change for the better the way people move around. If we get this report endorsed today, I have no doubt, as you've been quoted in the press today, uh, Steve, that this will be the start of an active travel revolution for our city region. Any questions for the being on that report? Um, yeah, thank you very much. And um, I may have missed it, but um, I Absolutely. Um, those, those are two really, really important points. If I take them in reverse, genuinely we see kind of cycling and walking as the start and end point of an end-to-end -end journey. So crucially how people get to and from the bus stop, the train station, is absolutely vital. And utilising your bike particularly is a key part of that. Some of the ways that we're already doing that is there's some very good high quality infrastructure already at most of the city region's train stations to accommodate bikes. The brand new fleet of trains we're buying for the Merseyrail network hasn't just got accommodation for cycling on it, those spaces have been designed by <coughs> local cyclists. We know that we've put cycling at the heart of our new rolling stock. We're also looking at how, with the development of what we call the green bus corridor concept, of how we can put in some good quality infrastructure to improve <coughs> the and reliability for buses, how can we incorporate cycling into that so the potential for example kind of uh, lockable uh, cabinets for people to put the bikes at certain key uh, bus stops so we're really kind of thinking that through how genuinely this is at the heart of uh, a full integrated public transport network in terms about the points of uh, driver education i think that's really important one of the things that uh, has come out very very clearly from the research that we've done is that for, for people to feel confident that they will be safe on their bike, they want something segregated, they actually want to be away from 
uh, other vehicles in a, in a practical and safe space. But there is a lot more that needs to be done about kind of overall road user attitudes to one another. Uh, there's obviously discussions we've had with the sort of Police and Crime Commissioner about that agenda in the round. Um, there's some very good examples with local bus operators taking their bus drivers through cycling awareness training. So making sure that kind of when their um, drivers are out and about in the local network, they're fully cognizant of kind of how to drive around cyclists and making sure that they've spotted them accordingly. But there is still more that we need to be focusing on that agenda, yeah. Fantastic. Um, and and will, it, will it form a part of the, you know, the, the expenditure here? Yeah. Okay, well, in regard to um, safety on the roads, that was covered in July 17, I'm told, in our um, road safety strategy, and that was approved by the CA. So that's, that's a, some of those issues. But what you're saying is, would budget be allocated for us to enable those recommendations to be taking place? So that's um, probably not within the £16 million allocated within this budget, but in previous budgets we've allocated monies. But this is about trying to get the, the segregated... I, I'm, a, I'm a lap cyclist. Um, I used to have to go through um, the Black Bull, and anybody who knows that area, as you swing around, you're taking your life into your hands. If there was a segregated cycle route, or if we could affect drivers' behaviour, as you suggest, and then I might not, I might get the lighter back on, you know what I mean? Sure. <laughs> Huge interest here. It sounds like swings and roundabouts to me, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is, it's true. So we, we need to do something, but what I think what Liam's identifying is th this is not the end of it, this is part of an integrated transport plan that we have. So cycling and walking, um, this is the first leg, the down payment of a 600 kilometre walking and cycling network and all the other policies that we're doing so we've included cycling with our new Roman stock with the new trains we've included cycling in thinking about air quality we've included cycling with job opportunities for apprentices we're actually giving some cycles to apprentices so we're trying to build it in as a, a holistic um, issue around active travel but you're right we um, we need to do more just on the the thing about the next generation, 8,000 people are taking yeah. up our um, bike ability, yeah. um, a road safety awareness scheme. And, and as we hopefully increase the quantum and the volume of people who will use that network, it makes it easier, in all honesty, to come back here and persuade the leaders that we need to invest even more in um, cycling uh, and in active travel. Not that we need an awful lot of persuasion, but when you've got competing budgets, have to do it on a business by business case. Jane, I know you're in the Thank you, thank you, Steve. Just um, to add to what's already been said, the Merseyside Road Safety Partnership does a huge amount of work around the education of drivers. There are uh, op Operation Stop Safe, Safe Pass, sorry, Operation Safe Pass, see in a moment, uh, where um, police will go on into an enforcement operation and will use a cyclist, it's usually a police officer dressed uh, for cycling and cycling on the road, and pull over drivers who do not give that cyclist sufficient room. Um, and when they do that, that gets publicised, and we hope that is just one operation that the police get involved in, which is about teaching drivers the need to be more considerate on the road and to give cyclists and pedestrians more room. But I would also uh, applaud those local authorities that have been making crossings, all, all red lights all at the same time. I note that there are a number of, more of those around the area. It remains one of, of the policing priorities from Merseyside to improve uh, the safety on the roads and to reduce the number of people killed and seriously injured. And in, I know that one of your concerns will be as you get a huge influx of young people coming into the city region as students, many of whom would want to uh, use cycling as a method of getting around the city and getting to and from their studies. It is of acute, acute importance that we keep them as safe as we can. Educating drivers around that remains a really top priority, not just for the, not only for the local authorities, but for Merseyside Police too. Yeah, and just to follow on, it's part of the three years, which is the three strands, which are 
education, enforcement and engineering, and it's the engineering bit that we're, I suppose, concentrating on, but it's not taken in isolation. Same, John? Uh, sorry, just one final point. So, I appreciate we can't form part of this spec, but we could commit to making sure that whenever we talk about the enhancement of you know, the, the cycle and walkways, that we also talk about the safety of cycling. Um, you know, it says something, doesn't it, that what people want is segregation. They want segregation for a reason. And so we do need to keep talking about it. So, you know, I, I would suggest it should form part of any kind of publicity, etc. Yeah, absolutely. The same is taken out on board, then, Janet. Um, okay, so, it, but it's good news um, that we, we are in the process now of making those aspirations that we've had for two and a bit years actually come to fruition and we're going to see spades in the ground soon and, and those uh, improvements which hopefully will encourage people to use it and the other one if you talk about safety we need to talk about health um, not just your own individual physical health but we get more people onto cycles hopefully they'll be out of the car ditch the car and they uh, will improve air quality as well. So, um, with that said, can we agree the recommendations set out on page 103, please? Agreed. Um, nine is the next report explains the impact of the city region, in the city region, um, of the government's recent towns, fund, uh, new towns funded, has to be said. Um, and Amy is going to talk us through the report. Yeah, in the recent spending review, government announced a 3.6 billion fund to support regeneration of towns. A hundred towns have been invited to bid. In, in the first instance, up to 25 million pounds to support regeneration in their town, covering interventions from schools to transport. Four towns from the Liverpool city region have been invited to bid in: uh, Birkenhead, Roncorn, Southport, and St Helens. <coughs> Um, government are due to publish a prospectus soon and it'll set out guidelines the, and the eligibility criteria for applying. It'll also give us a sense of the timelines and the role of combined authorities. Um, combined authorities really keen to work with candidate towns and bids, including opportunities for co-investment or enabling works as appropriate. And to this end, we've established a Liverpool City Region Towns Group and it's co-chaired by the Combined Authority and Halton. And its aim really is to draw together best practice and ensure fit with the broader Combined Authority work, including, for example, our local industrial strategy and our spatial development strategy and other national opportunities. Councillor Haggis. Yeah, thanks, uh... thanks, Jeff. Thanks, Jeff. There's nothing much more really to say on that, which is... Uh... I've said it in, in, in quite a bit of detail, but just as the uh, just as an aside, as the portfolio holder for strategic investments, I have to say that this is not, as you would say, uh, I'm going to put a true devolution. Obviously, the towns and eligible activities have been selected by central governments with no local input. Unfortunately, the better way, obviously, would have been would have been to allow us to identify our own priorities. That's the one sad thing about it. But obviously, we welcome the money, and we are. Want to work together with all, all, all concerned, um, and there's lots of opportunity there. And for us on the world in Birkenhead, uh, we can achieve the 25 million and working with Combined Authority, Homes England, uh, and, and, um, and our partners uh, in, in a holistic plan uh, across the world uh, with the big ticket projects of the World Growth Company and the, and the World Waters plan, which could appeal. Uh, it, it will yield big, big opportunities. This is part of an overall uh, strategy that we have on the world, and it's to be welcomed. And our only call, I suppose, is to ensure that we see the colour of the government's money. Um, announcements are one thing, actually receiving the, the hard cash sometimes is <coughs> a difficult part of the process. Yeah. Um, can we therefore agree the recommendations set out on page 149, please? Item 10 is a report that seeks approval of the full business case to allocate up to £3.96 million for strategic investment fund in finance to support the skills apprenticeship hub along with some other funding. But uh, Councillor Hackett, you're going to take us to item 10. This is number, it's number 12. Yeah. 
Uh, Chair, I welcome this initiative. Obviously, uh, this is a £12 million program with £4 million coming from SIF and £8 million from the uh, European Social Fund. It's all about, obviously, inclusive growth by bringing opportunities to everyone in the city region. Uh, the skills and apprenticeship landscape is, of course, complex. It's too hard for companies and individuals argue, to, to navigate. The program will help companies, school children and others to understand the landscape through employer brokerage and apprenticeship promotion services. It will also help us understand skills needs across sectors. We are targeting, as you can see in this report, 10,500 apprenticeships and 270 jobs by matching learners with opportunities in companies. It's a, it's a, it's a great scheme and I say well done. Thank you, Jeff. Thanks, Councillor Pauline, um, do you want to add anything to that? No? Okay. Um, are there any questions on item 10? No. Can we therefore agree the recommendation set out on page 153 of the report, please? 11 is the uh, next report looks to establish a Brexit resilience fund, and we're all very much acutely aware of what's happening at the moment in regard to negotiations or otherwise. So uh, this is to support small and medium-sized enterprises in the city region and the aim of the fund is to deal with those Brexit implications for SMEs um, in our local economy regardless of whether there is a deal or no deal or anything otherwise uh, and I think again Councillor Hackett you are going to introduce uh, the report on item 11. Thank you Chair. This is the first submission of a £75 million business support programme I've been working on all year. It includes business finance, skills programs, scale up programs, and inward investment support. It's the largest, most focused business growth program we can remember. It's a very important moment for our city region. We are using the evolution to help local businesses, communities, and individuals prosper uh, from our economic growth. This 75 million program is a signal of the great ambition for the city region. Chair, whichever way people voted on Brexit, they did not vote obviously for economic damage. This 15 million pound fund, this fund, sorry, will, will provide loans to companies whose trading decision is threatened by a disruptive exit from the European Union. The loans will give these companies time to recover and react to their new environment. Of course, we only need it, as the Chair has said, if government cannot strike a sensible deal with the EU, but we need, obviously, to be prepared. On a practical note, we are hiring professional advisors to support this fund, and it will run through our newly established black growth company. Thank you, Chair. Okay, any questions on that? I see, I mean, thank you, Chair. Uh, I fully support this, this fund, and I think um, the city region and the Brexit Council take co share with, with uh, Tony Reeves, and we, we've made business resilience one of our key objectives, and, and to sustain businesses going through this, this very, very difficult and certain period of time. I, mean, I think hopefully this will help us to retain some of the businesses, and to retain some of the local employment, just through during this period. But most of all, I hope it's not required we come to a deal. That, that's the biggest biggest ambition I think we've got within the, within the council and I think with everybody else starting our city which is Okay, uh, any further comments? Uh, Councillor Mayor? Thank you. I also sort of welcome this. It's, it's important it? because who knows what's coming seems to come down the road. But I would say that I mean, it's good to see that we have great the fund help our cost there. Anticipated detrimental effects, but that can't. I don't think that should be just for SMEs because, for instance, where we are in Sefton, Sefton Council, we are the, we are the port. We, we have the main port for England, um, connecting with Ireland. We don't know what's happening. We don't know what's going to happen. Um, the the mood music we're getting is any any costs involved in, in dealing with this. Um, we'll rest with you, Sefton Council. Thank you very much. 
to give him money to Peel Court, to give him money to Liverpool City Council, um, would set them and it's all going to be happy. So we need to understand that there might be assistance needed there, and I'm sure we do, but just need to flag that up at this stage, yeah. And I think you yeah, absolutely support that. There is that uh, need, or potential need, for uh, us to gear up, no matter what comes out of, of any Brexit deal or, or even, dare I say, a, a no deal. The city region for us is our primary focus, and it will be for us as the leaders of the combined authority to decide in the future on how we respond to whatever happens on the 31st of October. Um, anything to add on that, Mark? No? Okay. Can we therefore agree the recommendation set out on page 209 of the report, please? 12 is uh, a report that seeking approval to establish an inward investment facilitation fund. And again, Councillor Harris, part of your portfolio, will you take us through this report? Thank you, Chair. Uh, we are committing £4.5 million of SIF to this. Fund and we hope to commit an additional 2.5 million of ERDF in due course. We will use the fund to incentivise companies to locate, obviously, in our city region. This is necessary to compete with other places that offer very generous incentives. Of course, companies will also be attracted by our skilled workforce, attractive places to live, and an ambitious business base. This fund will offer a quick decision making process and provide great help to our local authority teams. It strengthens our one from door programme for inward investment. Thank you, Jim. Okay. Any questions for Councillor Harry? Steve? Um, just, a, just a comment on this one, because you're probably better to be commenting on the majority of the business areas here. I think uh, attracting new business from outside the city region is one of our key, key goals, both for the lead and the city region. And, I don't think we should be leading with a with a grant to attract new businesses into our city region. That shouldn't be our, our one goal to go to the area where because that's not sustainable long term. It's not just not sustainable. But I think at the moment in time where we are with a lot of the indecisiveness, I think helping as other city regions and other areas are doing to help small small SMEs to come into an area where we know the majority of our growth is going to happen. I think it, I think it's great, and I think one of the most assuring things for me, one of the most exciting things is that it's actually it's been delivered with a joint approach through the one front door. So a very, very great investment, a very great opportunity to try our situation growth forward. So good. Uh, and as you say, part of our mix and <coughs> package of support for businesses right away across the city region. Um, any questions, any further questions? Um, sorry, Ian? I forgot what my daughter didn't project that. So just the recommendation B, Chair, just, just looking at it, it's absolutely fine, but will there be an involvement in, at these kind of stage with the, with the portfolio holder? With portfolio holders? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, okay. Is that right? Yeah. Right. Um, any further questions on that particular item? Um, therefore, can we agree the recommendations set out on page? 271 please. 13 is the following and same theme uh, as the previous two reports. This one looks to establish a flexi flexible growth fund um, and it would be a standalone fund um, that Councillor Hackett will explain the details of. Thanks Chair. Uh, another good news story. This 20 million um, and fund will provide flexible low interest loans to companies that wish to expand. It goes along with an ERDF grant fund that we are preparing. We want to do all